Dane, what's up, man? How you doing? Oh, great. Excited. I'm still kind of trying to catch my breath from a uh, coach we had on the other night, Coach Denny, and the weekend and all that to ramp back up for the excitement tonight. We got a great yeah, one in store. Yeah, you know, we're sports and music. Tonight's music night, man. Yeah. So I got a little something for you. Uh, inter introducing a new segment, Dane. This is just you and I. Right. Nobody else is in on this, but you and I. So I've been playing around with this idea called Who Sang It Best? I'm a big fan of if a cover song is done right, um, I, I want to know mm -hmm. what you think. So let me ask you this question, Dane. And all of you listening out there, I will ask you this. When you see the episode later today, um, do me a favor and drop a comment of also who you think sang or played it best. Okay. So, Dane, you ready? Um, yep. Here we go. First one is who who sang it better, Dane? Separate ways. Who sang it better, Journey or Dowtry, Dane? Oh, it's Journey. To me, okay. Journey. I mean, gotcha. Steve Harris, hard to beat him. Uh, yeah, this ain't this ain't rapid fire. This is just me and you talking for a second. <laughs> Got you. Next one, man. And again, those of you listening, please drop your responses in the comments. Who sang it better for Take Me Take on Me? Was it Aha or the Weezer remake? Uh, I'd say aha because I, I, I equate the video with it. I like the video yeah. with it. So, I'm, a, I'm I got a product you. of that era, so I had to go Speaking with it because of the video. I got you. <laughs> Speaking of your era, man, who sang this one better? Now, this is a tough one. Turn the page. Did Metallica do it better or the original Seeger version? Mm, that's a tough one. Tough it just one, depends huh? on the mood. You know, the last yeah. time I heard it, you know, I was in a different mood, so I like the Metallica version of it, you know, because it's kind of so, – it picked a butt. I can listen to either one and – Man, that's tough. One, tough. Huh? I, I mean, on the spot, it was only because I listened to it the most recent with Seeger's. Man, you. that's a that's an iconic yeah, I'm, song. I'm actually more of a fan of the Seeger on that one. Last two, who played it better? But love them both. So again, all these are great artists. So we clarify that. Who did it better for Higher Ground, Stevie or Red Hot Chili Peppers? Stevie. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can't go Legend. wrong with that, man. Now here, last Definitely. one. Who pl who played it better? So who played Little Wing better? Did Jimmy do it better or Stevie Ray Vaughan? Who played it better? Oh man, mine's easy. I'm I'm Steve on that one, man. Yeah, oh, I'm easy on that. Uh, one. I'm probably have to go with that too. I yeah, man, that's the whole difference. God, John, that's it's tough. almost a different yeah. style, you know. Yeah, so. it's a different. I mean, you you can't go wrong with Jimmy though. I mean, if you say Jimmy, yeah. it's like everybody's. Yeah, it's I mean, uh, it's crazy. Yeah, the king. Well, the king there. The, the king. Well, speaking of speaking of kings of of, of influence and new styles, Dane, I'm gonna get into it. Um, there's a band. I introduced them to you a few years back, um, the record company, and they're Chris Foster, singer, uh, mm -hmm. one of a kind. There's no voice like Chris. I mean, I think about generational artists of the 90s. I think of people like yep. Chris Cornell, early 2000s, the Chester Benningtons, and now this new rock revival movement of things like the Revivalists and Black Keys and Nathan Rateliff. And Chris Voss is a one of a kind singer. Uh, so I'm honored to get into it. And from day one, man. First album, first single, I've been listening to them. There's a station we had called The Fly, and they started playing. I'm like, this guy is awesome. And they're about to drop some new content, their fourth album, which we'll get into. So before I go all fanboy out, I'm going to get down to it and bring on Chris Voss. Chris, how you doing, brother? Wonderful to see you guys today. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, hey, thank excited, you for coming man. on. It's our, our pleasure. Definitely. Yeah. A real honor, Chris. So we've got some questions, man. Again, we'll kind of get into it, and then we'll have some time to talk about the uh, the album coming up, man. So you as an artist, dude, I, I mean, every word I said, one-of-a-kind voice. Uh, nobody can put a finger on it. Take me back, though, man, because I know you play. You're killer at the harmonica, many different instruments. When did you first start playing, man, in your life? What instrument was it, and how old were you, you know? Well, uh, first of all, mm -hmm. I want to thank you for the kind words. You know, grew up on a Wisconsin dairy farm. I have to say thank you. Uh, Ma taught me right. You know, and Dad raised me. <laughs> Uh, to be polite <clears throat> but i do play rock and roll so i ain't too polite but, uh, <laughs> I, will, I, I mean i just uh i was started uh early on my my interest in music uh i have no memory of not being completely enamored with it um it was the center of uh, a lot of who i was from a young age i didn't get my hands on a guitar till about sixth seventh grade and that's because i did grow up on that dairy farm and uh, i kind of grew up in a little bit of a time warp uh like meaning it what not everything was immediately accessible. There wasn't like 10 kids in my, my school playing guitar. There was nobody, you know, it was like, uh, and if there was anybody with a guitar, it was like a nylon string guitar. And somebody, you know, if you went to a lesson, it would be like some teacher teaching you like Mary had a little lamp. <laughs> definitely not that, you know? So, um, I just kind of, I, I, uh, just kept saying oh, how badly I wanted a guitar. I made, uh, a dollar an hour on the farm and my mom had me put 50 cents towards the college fund. So 50 cents at a time, I, I started saving my money and then they kicked down and got me one for when I graduated. My eighth grade is when I finally got my hands on, on oh, wow. 
good one. I, I had been messing around on, on some stuff. When I say a good one, it was a pretty, it was not really that good. <laughs> <laughs> But to Good me, it was, it was the sun, the moon, and the stars. You know, like my grandpa, he was a big country fan. My dad was rock and roll. My mom was Motown. So, like, it, even though I did grow up, you know, uh, that way, uh, which was a great way to grow up, really curates the imagination and the expressive yeah. mind, soul, and you, you get to be kind of form a lot of uh, things that can become assets later to your creativity. Mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, uh, it was always there. But when that guitar got in my hand, it just never left. My mom used to say to me she's like once you put it in your lap i never saw you ever without it and it's like yeah it's definitely mm. the case you know i, I play it mm. i feel in that way I, if i'm sitting around it's it's in my hand it's, mm. it's just part of you you know i love it man that's that's good to hear I, I saw that you know a couple of pieces of what you said and i knew you played early on so that's that's cool to hear man before dane takes two so that being your first guitar i was told dane this my dad my first real guitar was a road star my dad got it for me when did you get your first baby like your first real guitar man not no no disrespect to that one but do you remember oh, what yeah first it was a little real guitar I, was? the first one was like a little epiphone which was like kind of it wasn't even a strat copy it was just kind of a, a it wasn't cool enough to be like a metal guitar and it wasn't bluesy enough to be a strat you know it was just kind of in weird weird middle ground the first one that i really threw down for that uh, i i couldn't afford the less paul that i got like uh, a Les Paul, like a used Les Paul, what they called like a studio or no, it was called a studio light. It was like a really funky little blue thing. I played that through high school. And then I ended up um, uh, when I got to college, I cashed in all all of those 50 cent pieces and went and bought myself a proper Les Paul and a proper Stratocaster. <laughs> I knew it. Strat, man. I got it. Dang, go ahead, man. <laughs> so, so whenever you started going and learning your craft and building and writing and, you know, using that imagination to go to that, you know, what you wanted to do, do you remember who your first band was? at that time or did you do solo things or oh yeah like my that? brother and i would jam he had a drum kit and we would make this cacophonous nightmarish racket that my poor parents would go out and <laughs> we'd go out in the uh we'd go out in the uh, garage and jam out we'd open the garage door and the only thing in front of us was about uh, about 50 yards away was a pasture of of cattle and uh they were a good audience nice fuzzy <laughs> i love it they didn't get too excited but they didn't get you know they were far enough away they didn't get freaked out but that was you know, and then I've jammed with some buddies in uh, in high school, uh, typical high school band names, which will not be mentioned here. Yeah. <laughs> understood. Understood. Because <laughs> uh, they're offensive, just because they're downright embarrassing, kind of like my <laughs> back then. But uh, um, yeah, man, it, that, that was it. We just got in it early and uh, I started writing the first minute I played the guitar. I was like, I want to write my own stuff. So mm -hmm. I uh, I got into that right away and just. Um, I made a promise to myself. It's, it sounded, it, it, it was something I didn't used to talk about because it almost sounds, I, I don't know, kind of strange. Maybe, I don't know how it sounds, but it feels strange to talk about it, I guess is a better way to say. I made a promise to myself when I was 14. I was sitting there, I was looking outside of my bedroom and it was like, you know, it was, I was yeah. just a farm, farmland, man. Uh, the long story short is I was looking out there and I was like, one night I was just like, I'm not going to go anywhere unless my guitar takes me there. That was my commitment to like the idea of being a musician. And it seemed like a good idea at the time. And then for about the next 10 years, it was just was a really dumb idea because I didn't go <laughs> very far. But then once I start, started moving, you know, then it, it, it got there. And that was a really exciting thing to cash in that chip, you know, and, <laughs> and uh, I remember having a chance to go over and study overseas and uh, like for, you know, as a decent student, um, and uh i just was like no way no way i'm 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 waiting and so when it finally happened you know with the record company um many years after i started you know mm -hmm. it was a pretty sweet moment so i love it man wow. i love wow. it that's fantastic then go over to you man now, now once you started rolling through and, and doing you know gig after gig and started booking bigger events from those early days of you know, when you finally started catching a foothold of this music scene up till now, are, are there some events that back then up till now that kind of stick with you and that you always remember? And, and if you do mm -hmm. have a couple, could you maybe share a couple of them with us? You yeah, mean concerts I'm at a scene or shows? Yeah, up, just yeah. well, shows you've played. I mean, uh, events yeah. you've done. Well, I can give you a quick list of some of the concerts that I saw early on. I saw Prince pretty early. 
I saw Ray Charles with Milwaukee Symphony Orchestra. That blew my mind. I saw B.B. King uh, early on wow. rip me up pretty hard. Um, uh, I, the first uh, ticket I ever bought with my own money was a Metallica ticket. Um, gotcha. And uh, nice. so my first song, you were talking about Metallica earlier. Um, I uh, The first song I ever learned was Seek and Destroy off of Kill Em All. Nice. And, uh, you know, I had a lot, I loved blues and I loved metal and I loved like classic rock, you know, and, um, mm-hmm. but like metal, I'm talking like, you know, uh, you know, Metallica, the early Megadeth stuff, stuff like mm-hmm. that. And then I just moved into, to, you know, I always loved Hendrix, Vaughn, uh, you know, all those guys, um, blend, yeah. got into the punk stuff, you know, the Ramones yeah. and whatnot and, uh, muddy waters is kind of like my high my upper echelon guy he's the guy that kind of ties it all together for me muddy waters from uh chicago yeah. uh for any listener who doesn't know who that is muddy waters uh was an he's awesome guy. he 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 influenced everybody i mean uh the rolling stones are named after a muddy Waters song <laughs> you know rolling stone magazine is also you know so it's it's pretty big deal um but that that kind of uh, you know i saw ray charles all that stuff and then playing gigs there've been a couple with the record company that have been really kind of awesome. A couple of red rock shows. Uh, mm-hmm. We opened with John Mayer on the mayor cool. did uh, Madison square with him and, and a bunch of other dates. And then we did tour the Bob Seger uh, uh, going away tour his his retirement tour. So we played the forum oh. in LA on that and a couple others. Wow. And, wow. Uh, now, now that I've revealed that I am a Metallica fan, and a Bob Seger <laughs> fan, I have to tell you, I don't go with the who sang it better thing, but I will say I prefer the Seeger version. And the reason is he wrote it. Same with Hendrix. Yeah. Well, now, I'm a huge Seeger A fan. Well, I wouldn't say, I would always make the argument that you know, if somebody says, oh, Ch- you know, Jimi Hendrix is a better guitar player than Chuck Berry, then I would say this would be my conversation I'd have with my buddies. I'd go, <laughs> oh, man. That's like saying, you know, it's like, yeah, okay, a, a, a 67 Chevy is cooler than a Model T, but right. the it's Model T yeah. doesn't happen, this doesn't happen. So it's like, yeah. you kinda, I think when you when you make that argument, you got to respect the lineage, but it's, yeah. a personal, it's a personal thing. You know, I think what you're <laughs> yeah. in those moments is like, what flips the switch inside my body as a musical yeah. fan, right? And that is yeah. a legitimate thing to do. I think, yeah. though, unlike your sports side of things, you know, whereas there's a definite like, unless the refs blow it, which we see all the time, <laughs> right? Score, you know, it's like they scored this much; these guys did not. There's a winner. But when yeah. you, that's the fun thing about talking about music is it's it's an art, so it's like yeah. the, it's not as cut and dry as the sports yeah. side. But I also am a big sports guy too. I I love, love, that. love football, baseball, uh, especially football. That's that's all I really have time for these days. But uh, I assume you're a Packers fan, right? Is that I assume? Is it or yes. no? Yeah. Uh, I'm yeah. a I'm a Packers fan. I uh, um, uh, also oddly enough, uh, my one of my favorite cities in the world is Chicago, Illinois. So mm, okay. I have a deep love for Chicago. Uh, because I grew up listening to XRT radio. I love Muddy Waters and Chess Records and all this stuff that happened in Chicago. Mm-hmm. I got a lot of people out there I dig, and we have a great uh, following out there. Um, yeah. I don't know if they will be after the here. I like the Packers, but you know, what can I do? <laughs> <laughs> no. That's the blanket they threw in the crib, man. I, I got to roll. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> no, man. Chicago, Chicago's been good to us, man. I'm I'm a Cards fan, but I don't have that. I don't have that animosity, man. We got buddies from there. My buddy Tobin from Flat for 56 is a Chicago native, and just you guys are great out there, man. So I'm curious as I kind of go into this, man, because Red Rocks comes up a lot, man. And I, yeah, I kind of knew definitely. the Muddy Waters thing from studying him. I say this not creepily, but I've studied what you do, and I like I like your body of work. So would you say as an influence? I know you can't really do one. You can't do that, but Muddy – would you say that probably tops them all as far as just the mark that's been left on you as an artist? Is that, is that kind of your, your, your bright star, if you will, who's been the biggest artistic influence on you? If you could, if you could narrow it down, you know, you know, I think uh, mm-hmm. if you think about like anything you've done in your life, if you, um, if you focus on something, you study something, there's an accumulation of knowledge, you know, you're taking, right. you're taking all these things you've, 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 uh, if you're a good student and, and you want to really reflect well on the teacher, you, you, have respect for the lessons and then what you put out should be reflect that that is in you but you're not copying anything you're trying to make your own thing you know whether it's quote better or worse or who sang it better <laughs> whatever <the hell. laughs> yeah it, it's uh, uh 
it's it's <laughs> only ear of the beholder. But um, yeah, say that you know, there's such a list. I mean, like when I think about like there are quotes I pick up from people like I always pay attention to what Springsteen has to say about the process where he's like take the time lyrically root out cliche take get in there dig in you know mm -hmm. notebook tear pages out uh the stones you know when we look at our our records and we were like how big of you know you get a record it lands you finally have a record that somebody's listening to it was kind of unexpected for us you know the first record mm -hmm. was done in our living room just like this one it got on the radio we didn't expect that you know um all the stuff that happened with that record and uh uh at that point, you kind of say to yourself, how daring do we want to be? And then you can look at a band like, you know, another thing Springsteen would say is your heroes will leave you the roadmap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you care enough to look and learn the lesson. And mm -hmm. uh, so I look at like the Stones and I go, you know, Stones 12 by 5, Stones Flowers going, is not the same as the Stones and Let It Bleed or Goat's Head Soup or Steel Wheels. Yeah. So it's like... Yeah. So Stones, as uh, Hendrix is a huge one for me. Uh, Johnny Ramone, Stevie Ray Vaughan, The Stooges, uh, J James Hetfield. Um, I'm a huge. Uh, uh, when you talk about Metallica, that's somewhere around here at during the the dreaded last couple of years when we were all just buying stupid crap because we're sitting at home. I bought yeah. something that was ridiculously awesome, which was a Cliff Burton T-shirt because I love Cliff. Nice. Oh yeah, original Metallica. Um, Anyhow, so yeah, there's there's all sorts of stuff, man. Ask me tomorrow, I'll tell you a different answer. You know. Like, <laughs> oh, I love it. No, man, it's spot on, man. Like I, I said, Zeppelin, I could go cream, I could go, <laughs> and then I can yeah. sit right here and tell you the Beastie Boys have made a huge impression on us. Like, there's a lot of like old traditional hip hop uh, that yeah that you'll hear in our beats. You know. Oh yeah. <laughs> some of that in there. So. Oh, yeah. But speaking of you know your beats and and we know that you guys have uh, some new music coming out this Friday, which everybody's everybody's excited for it. and you know there's quite a story behind that uh, i was watching about how you guys had this record come about for you kind of getting back to the basics and yeah. persevering through some things that you guys have gone through yeah can you tell us a little bit about that because uh because we I, always want to know what's next on the horizon for you but we'd love to hear that yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm an open book man um you know coming out of going into uh 2020 uh just oh, yeah Going into it, you know, we were kind of in a place where we were really ready to have another level, you know, all things signs were pointing to this, this level up and mm -hmm. crashed right into the side of that thing, just like everybody else did. And, you know, it was yeah. an all stop for the music business. We put out a record, a uh, play loud record during the pandemic, which was a record we really worked hard on and we loved it. And it was a big growth record for us. And, you know, um, I, I still think it's, I stand behind every damn record we ever did. I have to. Yeah. If you put out a record and, and you can't stand behind it, you can you can say, I mean, I'm fine to say, when I say you, I mean me. I don't speak oh, yeah. to myself. But when I put out a record, I go, yes, of course. If I listen to it 10 years from now, maybe I go like, and which I don't genuinely sit down and listen to my record. I'm too busy trying to learn. But, you know, yeah. sometimes you'll sit down, you'll hear it, it'll come on. And you might could go like, oh, yeah, the, the guitar did this or that. But I found that to be a really big waste of time for me because it's just like, you just got to own who you were. It's like, that's mm -hmm. what it was. Did I do it honest? Yes, I did. Did I try my best? Yes, I did. Do mm -hmm. some people like it? A couple do. Do a lot of people <laughs> not know about it? Yep. Do a lot of people not like it? I don't know. But no, we love it. You know, so it's like, you can't get hung up in all that. And uh, coming back around for this record, we came out of that and uh, we had a kind of a stretch of really rotten luck. I mean, to be mm -hmm. honest. So we had done the la or the record, and it just goes into a good place. This isn't a complaint. This is just <laughs> showing you what occurred. <laughs> I have nothing to hide here. Uh, yeah. We we had a tour we had a tour cancel because mm -hmm. COVID and the ticket sales were horrible. We were tens of thousands of dollars in the hole. The last record we were working, you know, still working that. We had some songs. We recorded them. We sent them into our label. We had done three three records with this label. A new new people came in at the top, you know, they didn't, we didn't hear from them for a couple of months. And then like right before Christmas, like about December 19th, we got the notification, you guys are dropped. 
So oh, it was wow. kind of like, it wasn't that co- as cold as like you guys dropped, but it's like mm-hmm. the way you say that in a nice gen- gentle way, but what it really equates to in the end, it's like, okay, we can say, Hey, best of luck. And that's nice. I, I respect yeah. the decision. You know, I, there's no, if it's not your bag, cool, do you know, yeah. go our separate ways. No big deal. No harm, no foul. But the fact of the matter is the timing was a bit of a drag. So at that point we had a, a, a choice. It's like, look, just had a tour get canceled. We've got thousands and thousands of dollars in debt. We just did a really expensive record. That's just hanging out here and we need to write another one. So, uh, um, what's your, uh, PG, uh, rating here? Can I, can I, uh, it's, it, it is PG. <laughs> all, right, all right. All right. You're lucky. You're lucky. You're lucky. All right. We were like, screw it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> we, were, we, we were like, uh, you know, whatever. Hey, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna do it our way. I'm like yeah. going back in the living room, writing a song, uh, these songs our way we're doing it our way alex our producer our bass player you're going to produce the record and uh we recorded it we got signed the first day of the opening of the music business about january 6th we got the interest of 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 round hill who's our new label they've just let us make a record exactly how we want we hit the charts last week we're number uh we're up on like number four as of this week and only reason i'm putting that in is not to be like take a look it's just like it's this true, record, man. This record is about, you know, sometimes you get a challenge dealt to you and you got to decide yeah. how you want to go for it. And I, the, the thing that I learned and relearned, I've said before, the music business is like hurling yourself and your soul and your body towards going over a mountain, knowing there's a cliff on the other side of it and having no idea if there's a bridge there. You're going too fast to stop and you just got to pray. Yeah. I hope I know <laughs> there's a bridge there. I'm pretty sure there is. And love that. always wow. scared when, the, when you make that. I was, I was scared mm. to death, but I believed it was like, if I'm going to drown, let me drown with my name on the life preserver or whatever the hell you want. Yeah. Like if I'm yeah. going to freeze in the middle of the, whatever, you know, it's like, so that's, that's the way it went down and it was all love and, and it brought us closer as a band and the, the record's a positive event. Uh, you know, it's a positive, great, man. you know, so no uh, man, that's what we're coming I, I love it. I've listened to all – again, I've listened to all of them. I'll tell you this, man. I mean, Dane, as we were talking about this, and we've been – like I told you, when you're you're too kind, man, because you're too humble. Everything you put out is great. I told Dane, I don't know how you can go through four albums and not make a song that's bad. There's got to be some beats out there somewhere, <laughs> but I don't get it, dude, because I'm like, usually you'll have an album. And I'm, I'm big on concept albums. I like, let's fr- start to finish. I'm like, I can't skip a song. I can't skip a song when I'm listening to you, dude. So it's like uh, we've interviewed – I'm telling you, Chris, we from like See There, Chevelle, P.O.D., members of shine down we've been blessed like oh, we were so giddy to talk to you because you're so raw and so honest and i love the way you're like hey this is just me and people flock to that in today's world where genuine is huge you're just as genuine as they come dude so we just we love everything about what you're doing it's crazy man i appreciate that uh dane josh and i my thing to it too is just like you know if i've got any message for anybody it, 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 as far as like how i see things it's like there's only one thing i've learned it's like you know uh, it, work hard be yourself and, and oh yeah uh, there was a funny thing like um there's been a lot of things about like manifesting things have you noticed that like a lot yeah. of people talk about even like uh you know there have been some sports figures there's a lot of po- and like i've thought a lot about that and 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 the one thing i i kind of thought that tied it to this lesson that my father farmer taught me uh you know if you got something that you care about i don't care what it is whether it's a a, a show like this or you're working a, a job that you that you're managing a place or you run your own business You know, my dad taught me a very valuable lesson and and a lot of the farming lessons have tied in to music and and been so (laughs) essential. And one of them was a farm that makes it, you walk, you don't look at your field from the road, you walk into it, get Mm. out of your vehicle and go see what's out there. You got to stick your nose out into it. You have to talk to people who are listening. You have to remain self-assured that you know what you're doing, but listen, learn, find out stuff. Don't be, you know, I'm, I don't care about being right. I care about mm-hmm. doing things the best way that I can. And if mm-hmm. I do, if I'm doing something wrong and somebody can tell me, meaning it's like, Hey man, if you do it this way, it might be a little easier, whether you're learning a guitar part or, or writing songs, that's what I'm seeking. I'm every morning I'm seeking the, uh, 
all I want to do, all success to me is, is just waking up in the morning, thinking about music, walk, taking walk, thinking about music, taking, you know, whatever I'm doing all day long. I just want to be thinking about music or thinking about how to elevate who I am, because as an yeah. artist, it's like kind of the way it's got to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have wow. kids, so I've got extra time. On my <laughs> it's awesome because I, I think it's cool, Chris. I, I will give you this. And Dana, we kind of took open mic and we reversed it, which I love it. You, yeah, uh, I, love it. I love you already, Chris, because we took I'll a little talk, segment. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm I love sorry. it. I will talk. No, I, don't I, apologize. I, I, Dude, we, this is what we relish. So we, we actually, yeah. it's funny. We try to blueprint things and I like you. You you knew it started so comfortable. That was a segment that we actually had called yeah. Open Mic. So sorry, Dana. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> so I love it, Chris. There's a segment, Chris, and I'll let you go. I know you're on time crunch we've got one more segment for you though chris i gotta okay. do this okay so um give me three or four minutes there's a segment we do called rapid yeah. fire and i promise you in all the interviews you've done i bet you money you've never had a segment like this okay we'll, we'll end it on this we'll land the plane on this here's this how we do this I, is this where the plane uh, the plane goes off course uh, for me <laughs> this, this is where it gets really weird man it's gonna get oh, weird man. for a second okay so right. now let me align myself and get ready <laughs> right. Al align your chi we're gonna get weird with pg right. our fans give us questions chris and what this is dane and i bet we already have the questions we we bet on what we think you're gonna say we're big betters so we think we, we know what you're gonna pick and we're gonna throw them at you you got to pick a scenario you got to go with them, okay so last segment rapid fire here we go now imagine time doesn't exist you can travel back in time or forward so people can celebrities that are past can be alive again there's nothing's off limits okay so first question you're taken back into 1950 and they're asking you to take the Allstate commercial song, which you know of, that Brad Paisley does and all that, right? And you're asked to make this song happen. You have to do a duet with either A, Roy Orbison, or B, Buddy Holly. You guys got to make the Allstate song. Who's going to be your uh, duet partner on that song? Wow. Well, uh, <laughs> here's, here's what I would say. If I had to write a song... It would be Buddy Holly, but if I had to just put my voice and sing something, it would be Roy. So Roy. Okay, so Roy, gotcha. Dane, did you have that one? Or yeah, I know Roy. Yeah, definitely. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> this is a it's a music and creativity uh, question. These are great. So the I, next I'm question. Sorry if I have to qualify. That that was a no. two. <laughs> You know, no, you're good, man. All right, go you're, ahead. You're, you're, you're spot on, mate. You're spot on. Question two. You're on the road and your record company says, hey, Chris, this is a weird request. We're asking you to write a song about one of these two objects. You got to make it cool. You got to make it somehow emotional. You have to write an entire song about these two objects. The first song you have to write about is you got to make a song about a toaster oven to make it cool. Or B, you have to write a song about an old school typewriter. You got to make it cool. You making a song about a toaster oven or a typewriter, which one are you going to write a song about? Well, let me tell you, first off, nobody's going to make me write a song about anything. <laughs> right. <laughs> but to play the game, <laughs> the game I'd, have to go I with, I, I'd have to go with the typewriter, man. I, I got just, you. I love All right. It. Here we go. I got you. Dane, did you have that one? Oh, yeah. It's long past due that the typewriter gets me, get, get its due. <laughs> I love it. So two, plugged, two more. They're, they're unplugged or plugged in, man. You can't go wrong with acoustic. There you go. <laughs> I love it, man. So, so two more, a couple more, I'll get out of your hair, okay? So Don't on these, it, I've got the, the, <laughs> So you're asked, to, sometimes artists get asked to fill it in. I think about over the time, maybe artists get sick and they call you up and say, hey, can you fill in for us for the night, okay? So um, you got a cool wheelhouse. Like I said, I think of, you know, not to compare, but I, I understand the James Hatfield really? thing, kind of the Grady stuff. You're asked to file fill in either for the night for a either a steven tyler or axel rose for the night going back to the 80s who are you filling in for and that's those are both really tough because as you can hear from my voice i'm more of the johnny cash range yeah. but uh you know uh <laughs> i would probably <laughs> have to and this isn't a preference in music i just actually think i'd be able to sing aerosmith songs with a little more conviction uh because gotcha. more there's they're one generation back so they're a little closer yeah. to the blues element, whereas Axel, yeah. that's just straight rock. And I, uh, I, I don't know if I can hang in the Axel world as, as convincing. As I can. <laughs> got it. I got yeah, you. And, and, and the recovery after singing like Axel would be. Yeah. <laughs> be I don't know if I'd make it back from that anytime soon. Dane, <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you have that one? Did you have, yeah. did you have oh, yeah. Steven? Steven Tyler. Oh, yeah. Got you. It's not last, too much relief. One. <laughs> Chris, last one, man. So you're asked to somehow we're going to go back and again, we're going back to, I guess this would have been 80s. Yep. You were able to say that you wrote one of these two iconic songs. You were, you wrote it. Both great artists, love them both. 
you were able to say that you wrote I Just Called to Say I Love You by classic, classic song, Love Me Some Stevie, or you're able to say that you wrote Raspberry Beret. I Just Called to Say I Love You or Raspberry Beret, which one would you have wanted to take credit for writing if you could? My God, man. That's a tough, <laughs> well, that's a tough one because Both those great. two of my favorite artists ever. Um, I would probably, uh, just based on, let's say, throw away the rest of the catalog. Now you're really getting revi- It's like, if you think about their entire catalog, it's a whole different question. Because, yeah. You know, but, um, uh, and still a very tough one. But either way, you can't miss. And I, yeah. would, say, I, I would be more apt uh, to go for the song that has the more heavier emotional tie. Uh, whereas Raspberry Beret is like a party awesome song, yeah. I have to say I had to go with the Stevie song because of the emotional. Uh, Let's you know, go. One statement. I'd rather yeah. mix one, feel something real, like profoundly deep than than. than I love it. I had that one, Dane. Did, did you have that one, Dane? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, four for four now. Yeah, man, I am too, Chris. So it looks like, uh, Dane, neither one of us are getting lunch tonight, man. But Chris, thank you for that, man. Never. Give me two more. I'll, I'll, I'll break, the <laughs> I do, break the time. I, I do have a tiebreaker for the last one. Oh, I, I did say about just in case. Um, somehow you're on a tour, uh, and it's actually, we're going to go back to 1971. You're opening up for CCR and Elvis. Somehow this happens. Elvis, you guys, <laughs> CCR, it's happening. And you have to arm wrestle one of them uh, for basically where you go to dinner that night after the show. You got to arm wrestle Elvis or John Fogarty. Who would you rather arm wrestle um, to take dinner that night? Well, I mean, because I, I don't know if I could win in either, but <laughs> I would definitely rather arm wrestle John Fogarty only because, Dang it. <laughs> because uh, Elvis would not only make a fool of me, he would be good doing it. <laughs> I love it, man. Or at least if I lose to Fogarty, we're probably wearing around the same type of shirt. So we can be like, oh, <laughs> you, bud. You know, you got a flannel on. I got a dark shirt on. We're cool. <laughs> I got you. The shades, the whole deal. Oh, yeah. I'm very Play good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Probably the same taste in food and all that. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, can't, Dang, you can't mess with the king of rock and roll, man. That's all. Let's yeah, go. Yeah. You know? Dang it, man. I had Elvis Dane. Did you have that one? Because that's what I had. <laughs> yeah, I had Fogarty. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh dang it. There you go. Oh, man. Thanks, Chris. You be my one. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> my pleasure, guys. One of the, man, one of the win column for me. Finally. Man. All well, Chris, right. man, uh, I mean, you're, dude, I'm telling you, man, I don't, I don't just say that. I constantly, uh, what I do is Dane and I both, Dane studies sports every day. I study music every day. I'm a fan. Of, I'm a student of what you do. I love it. I constantly um, am promoting you to others. So this is just hopefully another one of your many avenues that when this comes out, we can just keep promoting you and, and rocking, man. So um, new album coming out Friday. Can't wait, man. Add it to my catalog stuff I constantly jam to anyway. You've been so gracious, Chris. It's been an yeah. honor to speak to you and maybe yeah. we can do it again sometime, okay? brother so appreciate you guys and leave you with the words of my father the dairy farmer ron voss if you can't be good be careful i love it man excellent (laughs) thank you chris thank you very much our pleasure i loved it man thanks chris take care brother we'll we'll be in touch yeah well then i'm telling you man uh they talk about you know not meeting your heroes and i'm glad i met what what do you think what a what a what a story i mean like he was talking about courage you know he said being afraid but doing it anyway, going at it anyway with all you've got. I mean, hearing their story of this latest album, I can't wait to hear it. Uh, man, and man. listen to them sing. I mean, for those who don't, you know, know any of their stuff, go listen to them. I mean, you won't be disappointed. It's it's one of those where it doesn't matter what mood you're in. It recenters you. It puts you in a place that, you know, of joy, just hearing him sing and hearing their hearing their music style. I love him. He's just, he's one of those people where dude, like, again, I I was in this vein. I was in a, I was studying and, and, you know, doing my, I was in this deep in this class I was working on. So I got in this vein of like Alabama shakes and like Santa rate lift. And I started, Mm -hmm. I started hearing him one day. I was like, who is this? Cause the off the ground kept coming on repeat. I'm like, this band is legit, man. So I look him up and I'm like, wait a minute, this isn't anybody I've ever, it was like 2017. Right. And I just started listening to their stuff deeply. I'm like, wow, this dude's got something to say. And then next thing you know, yeah. they dropped the 2018 album, which is great. And the one they dropped in 2021 is fantastic. Like, I mean it when I say they don't make bad songs. Like, and the fact that they did it in their living room, that makes it even cooler, Dane. Cause I, yeah. I told you a story yeah. one time I was listening to this interview with Kings of Leon they talked about making an album at somehow uh, somebody's house and they were like a song and they're playing right. pool in the background. To me, that just makes it even all the cooler, man. Like yeah. they're doing it at their house. Yeah. They just, 
<laughs> they, they just walk around and make great music, you know? So oh, they don't yeah. have to and, have and, fancy equipment and all that. They just do it at home, you know? So Yeah, and, and the, probably the everything around them that they love, they can relax, and, and the inspiration just comes to hit hits you a little bit different whenever you're you know in a relaxed state so mm. I, I i'm excited for it the new wow time. yeah you guys so we'll, we'll make sure we tag him in it thank you chris thank you benson for yeah. making that happen as manager thank yeah. you record company uh we love you guys uh please come back sometime soon because uh man we'll be just jamming the heck out of your music yeah. so um i like what he said is it pg and he continued to, <laughs> to, to make it shine he's such a gentleman thank you chris for that our audience loves yeah. that so um, upcoming, Dane, I will take a minute and talk about upcoming interviews. I like to kind of give you guys a heads up of what's down the road. We do have <clears throat> Johan stopping by from Lewis Bryce tomorrow, my buddy Johan. I've got Coach Trevino stopping by. I got some softball tomorrow during the day. It's a, it's a matinee for, for oh, some yes. softball. Um, Sunday, um, it's going to be fun. Sunday, we'll be calling some games. So Dane and I will be actually uh, calling the Chaos Gray Tournament. So I hope you guys yep. tune in for that. Yeah. On what is – we're on uh... – YouTube chaos softball gray. Yeah. Sunday night. It's a big night. You guys, we've got two, uh, uh, t- got two big ones coming up. Our buddy Mark and the band six century stopping by Monday night, the whole band, yeah. excuse me, Sunday night. And we've got this ex- insanely talented artist, Hunter root stopping by. So I got two big musicians come by Sunday. Um, so Sunday is going to be a day full of sports and music, both. Uh, we just can't wait to to bring more yeah. content to you guys in the future. So episode as we inch towards episode two hundred, Dane, just like that. So, uh, but again, th- thank you, thank you, uh, Chris, thank you, Record Company, all of you out there. Yeah. Thank you for listening. Please drop your comments of who sang it best, as Chris would say. Uh, who do you prefer? Maybe that's better. Thank you. Yeah, there you go. Um, as always, don't forget that we love you and Dane. Thank you for listening. <laughs>